I think the universities have a number of public missions. Uh, certainly, uh, their job is to educate uh, young people with skills that are appropriate to the world they're going into. Uh, one of their jobs is to uh, uh, serve their society with the creation of knowledge and to help, where appropriate, that knowledge out into uh, the community. Uh, but the core function, uh, the core function is to do with knowledge. It's to, first of all, create new knowledge by uh, discovering uh, things that were hidden from us or by getting a better understanding of what we know. Um, uh, secondly, to transmit that. And thirdly, to verify what we've inherited from the discoveries of our forebears. Knowledge is, is, is a bit unstable, really. You know, it's knowledge until you suddenly find that uh, there is a new uh, factor that you hadn't seen before. So, for example, you know, um, does dark matter really exist? We think it does. We have all sorts of tests that suggest that it does. But maybe, you know, in 10, 20 years, uh, something new will be discovered which will change that. So it, 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 it is a rather unstable business. But I think that the real core job of universities is to define what is secure knowledge uh, for the time being, at least. And I think we have to, we have to look after that. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure I can comment on Indian universities. Uh, I think that all universities um, have a tendency to change rather slowly in that respect, that they would teach in ways that they inherited. And I think that they will, um, that they have to adapt now to the whole new environment of digital learning and digital teaching. And I think that the classroom will become much less important. Uh, I think that teachers have to, do, to mentor students rather than instruct them. Um, but I think the important uh, thing about what is useful knowledge is that there's an element of utilitarianism in it, of course there is. Uh, but I think that it's uh, two definitions. I mean, one part of, of useful knowledge is its utility to the society. But another part of useful knowledge is it's that knowledge and that experience, that way that you find knowledge, uh, which um, helps you to be a, a contributing citizen, you, to be able to test things that are said to you, uh, to question, to uh, be skeptical, uh, not to be obstructionist or destructive or anything like that, but to be always saying, well, is that really true? Uh, and I think that too often uh, people in the ordinary business of their life don't say that. They just, they just assume, you know, that what's going on or what's being said is, ah, oh, it's okay. Um, but quite often it isn't. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not preaching for a perfect society or for perfect human beings. I mean, that's clearly not the case. But as long as universities go on teaching students that, and as long as they go on asserting the primacy of knowledge as distinct from pseudo-knowledge, uh, then we've got a good chance in the society of keeping ourselves creative and busy. And Indian students um, the ones that come to, to us, the ones that come to, to, to English University, particularly my university, they come from, from a, a tradition of education that is still rooted, I think, in this rather Socratic uh, uh, sense of, yes, you know. And uh, I, th I, I think that Indian students are still full of curiosity and and uh, 
desire to uh, really get to the bottom of things. I think it's not true of, of some other countries that uh, send us students um, where they have much more been taught to believe what the professor says and to reproduce uh, and, and not to, you know, not to, to uh, try to invent for themselves. So I don't think that uh, Indian students are less good than they used to be. I think that all students are less prepared than they used to be. I mean, our own students are less prepared than they used to be. The thing that resonates with me in what you were saying is more uh, professors saying they've got no time to do research and so on. I think that's both true and false. Um, I think that what has happened is that um, all these league tables uh, and all these, um, this emphasis on producing research and, and, and scoring high has um, accentuated the tension that exists for every professor between the teaching obligation and the research obligation. And all the reward is now attached to research both the personal reward and the institutional reward. And the result of that is, I think, that there is more and more of a tendency for professors to resent teaching, uh, to, I mean, I don't say they all do, but to find teaching an encumbrance and research a liberation. Well, that's always been there in a way, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm saddened at the way in which people complain about it now. I mean, we've all went through that. When I was, you know, a young uh, academic, you always had to balance teaching and research. But I've never understood why people find teaching so, so burdensome. I mean, for one thing, you're preparing the next generations. I mean, you're not going to live forever. Uh, for another thing, I mean, where do you expect to get your research students from if you don't teach undergraduates? You know, you've got to, what, get them from a farm or something? It's, it, it's so I, I don't like that, but it's very present. And it's certainly, I think, a problem for university leaders in how to keep your professors engaged in the full enterprise of an institution. Voting to leave the EU, it is vital to stress. Unbelievable people that I've gotten to know. I think it's going to, to, to make things like visas and costs um, bigger. I mean, I think, I think that the, the English have been quite unusually um, silly about visas for students and about uh, foreign students coming in. I think the Americans haven't. I think the Americans have been pretty good and the American universities have, have provided large financial aid packages. Whether Mr. Trump is going to change that or not, he sounds like it, but for the time being he says so many things that we don't really know what the real president is going to be like. Uh, realities will strike. You know, the world is in, in a contradictory frame, isn't it? On the one hand, everything we're all sort of fusing through the, you know, the, the, the cyber, yeah. On the other hand, we're all dividing, you know, so, um, so there's a tension there. How does but that affect universities? How does that affect universities? Well, I think it affects universities um, uh, partly by the, um, the way in which national governments are trying to make their universities perform tasks which are good for the nation. Whereas the whole of the business of knowledge constitution and all that is, is, is now irremediably international. Uh, and so I, th I, think there's a, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of tension within the way we are. But, yes, within the agendas, yeah. I think that it, it would be extraordinary if political matters weren't part of the general debate that goes on inside universities. I'd be surprised if they weren't, yes. I mean, 
I'm sure they are. I mean, everything that goes on around us exactly. is an object of debate, discussion, investigation, confrontation. Uh, it's part of the search for, you know, what is the true balance of things? What, what does this mean? Why is it like that? So I think that sort of the core of it, I think that has to be a free space for that. I also think there have to be a certain number of rules about how you do that debate. Um, I don't think myself that um, uh, true debate is and, and true sort of search for understanding is conducted by being loudly and offensively angry with each other because you don't get anything that way in, in terms of truth. I think that uh, young people deal in indignation and I would have thought it was proper for them to be indignant about things. I think that uh, student movements make mistakes. I think that university leaderships make mistakes. I think governments make mistakes. Um, so as I said before, we don't live in a perfect world. Uh, but I think that on the whole, it's up to a leadership of the university to, um, to contain, to police, well, to contain, it's better than police, um, the debate within this space in order to protect it, the space for debate. I think that on the whole, governments shouldn't intervene like that. Uh, I don't think that um, that it's a misuse of taxpayers' money for students to learn how to criticise and how to um, investigate how, how things happen in their society. I think it's part of becoming a responsible citizen. And that is what taxpayers, one of the things that taxpayers' money is for.